This is the 20th episode of Look at the Book on Romans 8, and it is one of the strangest, and if we're willing to have it, most wonderful glimpses into the Trinity's interaction on our behalf in all the Bible. So, Father, this is a perplexing text. I'm sure we don't see all that is intended here, but show us as much as we can see for our help that the Holy Spirit means for us to get. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So Paul has been helping us in uh, verses, Romans 8, what, 18 to 25. He's been helping us by putting our suffering in a global context and pointing out how God intends to bring the freedom of the glory of the children of God into reality and then bring all of the universe into that. And he intends for that to help us endure in patience. And now he says, likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts, that would be God the Father, knows what is the mind of the Spirit as he intercedes for us in these groanings. Because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God, or literally according to God. So... It may seem strange to you that God would ordain, that God would pray to God, that God the Spirit would pray to God on the basis of the work of God the Son, so that the Father and the Spirit and the Son are all interacting in this prayer life. That that may seem strange, but make no mistake of it. It's here in the Bible to help us. Likewise, the Spirit helps us. He intercedes for us. He intercedes for the saints. There's no doubt what Paul is up to here. He wants us to get help from this in the midst of our great perplexity concerning what to pray for. So first question I want to ask is, whose groanings are these? The Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings. Now, to answer that question, let's just make several observations. It says not that the Holy Spirit groans. He he is probably groaning, but it doesn't say that, and therefore there may be more to it. The Holy Spirit himself is interceding with or by, this is a dative, groanings. And so it may be our groanings that he is stirring up within us so that they are his and they are ours. That's the first observation I'd make, is that this with right here is a dative that could make this the the Holy Spirit the, the instrument of or the groanings, the instrument of the work of the Holy Spirit. Second observation I would make is that the Holy Spirit doesn't need to to groan. We don't know what to pray for. He knows exactly what to pray for. He doesn't have any weaknesses. These groanings are coming from weakness and from from ignorance. We don't know. This this is where the groanings are, are coming from, and the Spirit doesn't have any. Third observation I'd make is that when God the Father undertakes to discern the the praying in the mind of the Holy Spirit in all this, it says, he who searches the hearts. He's looking not in the mind of the Spirit. He's looking in our hearts when he wants to know the mind of the Spirit, because the Holy Spirit, I'm going to argue, is, is producing these groanings according to his will in our hearts. So our hearts are doing the groaning as the Holy Spirit stirs them up in us. And the next thing I would observe, and this is probably the most important, is that just in the preceding paragraph, especially verse 23, it says, not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Holy Spirit groan. We groan having the Spirit. See how close that connection is between Spirit and groaning? And here we're doing the groaning because we have the first fruits of the Holy Spirit. So back here, when it says the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings, there's no reason to think that's any different than the groanings of verse 23. And the last observation I would make is that there's an analogy, isn't there, with the, 
with verse uh, 8, um, 15 to 16, and the, the testimony of the Holy Spirit. Do you remember how that testimony worked? The Holy Spirit testified with our spirit by stirring us up to cry, Abba, Father. So even though we were doing the, the crying, Abba, I'm trying to write it in Greek. Abba, Father. It's the Holy Spirit's witness. And so here, I think these are our groanings in our hearts, owing to our weaknesses and our ignorance. And yet they are the the groanings of the Holy Spirit in the sense that he is causing these holy groanings that, according to his working, contain real petitions to God that we don't discern but he himself causes and God discerns by looking into our hearts and knowing the mind of the Spirit. Second question I would ask is, what does he pray for? Likewise, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. Now that weakness, that word weakness right there, could be the whole dimension of our our perplexity and our finiteness and our ignorance, but um, at least twice. Once um, in Galatians 4, I think it's 13, yes, 13, and uh, 1 Timothy 5.23, This is using this word to refer to Paul's physical ailments, and this is using um, this word to refer to Timothy's many ailments, which makes me think that he has not left this context behind. We who have the first fruits of the Holy Spirit groan inwardly, waiting eagerly for the adoption, the redemption of our bodies. You've got cancer. What do you pray for? You're under persecution and you could lose your life. What do you pray for? Do you pray for deliverance or do you pray for endurance? Do you pray for healing or do you pray for patience as you die? That is the sort of of weakness, I think, that the context suggests is right at the front of Paul's mind and the mind of the Holy Spirit. So likewise, the Spirit himself Um, The Spirit helps us in our weakness for we don't know what to pray for in those kinds of situations where our body is uh, about to die or be killed. But the Spirit himself intercedes with groanings. Oh, we groan in prison or in the hospital. We we groan aplenty. And, And the holiness of those groanings that are too deep for words, the Holy Spirit produces in such a way that when the Father searches our hearts and he hears those groanings that are too deep for words, he knows what is the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes according to God. And there's, there's one other clue that would tell us what he's praying for. Let's bring in verse 28, which follows this, this very famous God works everything together for good. So see how it fits with verse 27. And he who searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to God. And we know everything works together for good for those who love God. In other words, the the will of God here is for our good. Everything works for good, for our good. That's what the Holy Spirit is praying for. He knows in our weakness and in our ignorance what to pray for that will make Romans 8, 28 come true. And therefore, be helped, even if you don't understand the fullness of why God would ordain that, that God the Father hears the prayers of God the Spirit on the basis of the finished work of God, the Son. Whatever we don't understand, just know this. God's whole Trinitarian reality is helping us. And he means for us to take heart.